We're at this beautiful sunset here. Figured why do it inside when we can just come out here and enjoy this. We're about to lose the sun though, so we're gonna have to head inside pretty soon here. Not yet though. So today I wanted to talk about phantom LUTs. It's probably the most popular LUT pack you can get online. First off, if you guys are planning on buying these LUTs, uh, or if I convince you to buy them in this video, you can get 15% off uh, with code JULY, uh, and that's, of course, for the month of July. So if you're thinking about getting them, now's the best time to get into those LUTs. So first off, let's talk about who these LUTs are for. I think they're for two different people. First off, I think they're for the people that just want a really quick grade, add something to their footage and make it look really good real fast without having to tweak it really at all. Cause you can add these to your footage and I mean, they instantly look amazing. You really don't have to tweak anything. You can if you want to get really nitpicky, but I mean, they are great just adding them on and having immediately really great footage. And second, the person that wants to get the most accurate colors, uh, something comparable to what an Alexa can get you. Somebody's texting me on Discord. Shut up. And the colors are so, so accurate. He has a side-by-side -side comparison on his website of his Alexa Mini that he has compared to something shot on the A7S III with the LUTs applied, and you really can't tell the difference. Some people probably would be able to, but I sure can't. Oh, and a quick tip real quick. When you get these LUTs, you have two different versions. You have the Da Vinci version and the standard version. Uh, the Da Vinci one is meant to be used only in DaVinci Resolve. In no other program, only DaVinci Resolve because only DaVinci Resolve because it's meant to be used with DaVinci. However, the standard version is meant to be used with any other editing program, any literally any other program that will accept LUTs, you can use these LUTs with. So of course, that's where your Premiere, Final Cut, iMovie, does, does iMovie support LUTs? I don't know, I don't use iMovie. If you guys use iMovie, let me know if you can use LUTs. I'm not sure why he has these two different sets. I know DaVinci has like a very slightly different color space, so I think that might be why. So Jewel offers two different sets of LUTs. He has the Airy looks, which is obviously, it's trying to recreate the looks of the Airy Alexa with the Rack 709 LUT added. It says here that the Airy looks pack is geared toward recreating the look of the Airy cameras, giving a color accurate image. It claims to match the S Gamut 3 to Airy Alexa footage with the Rec 709 rut applied. Rut? LUT. Speak, Micah. And in the Airy Looks pack, he has five LUTs, and I'll show these on screen when I'm reading them out loud. So first off, he has Neutral. This is the standard. Uh, this is what's gonna get you closest to the Rec 709 look from the Airy Alexa. Then he has Tungsten. Ice blue. Jamaica, which I think might be my personal favorite throughout all these. It just gives such a deep and vibrant green, um, especially for some tropical areas. I really, really love Jamaica. And he has Utopia. All these LUTs are, again, designed towards recreating the Airy Alexa look. We lost the sun here entirely. This is so sad. So his second pack is the Film Looks Pack. And this pack is designed to replicate different looks from different film stocks that have been used in movies. And he mostly goes after the really, really popular film stocks that other people have used in makings of a ton of different movies. So the first lot is called Vision. This one's replicating the look from the Kodak Vision uh, stock. I've never really looked into film stocks so I don't really know what I'm talking about here when it comes to film. I'd really like to get into it. That's something that I've really been wanting to get into, especially film photography. I have some film lying around. It's just, I need to go out and shoot with it. 
Uh, I need to learn how to shoot with it also. That's, um, that's probably important. And then his next LUT is called Eastman, which is supposed to be replicating the Kodak Eastman stock. And then third we have Vision Teal, which is a variation on the same Kodak Vision film that the first LUT Vision was replicating. This one has more of like an orange teal vibe that a lot of people are into. And again, it's very subtle, very, very subtle. That's like, that's what he's really good at. And I think if you're starting out, these can be really, really good to look into just because when you're starting out color grading, you tend to oversaturate and crank things up to 11 or 12. So using these LUTs can be really good. It kind of shows you that you don't need to crank things up to 11 and having a very subtle, subtle look can make a really big difference. People say color grading is a very subtle art and it's true. Uh, next we have Eterna. This one is supposed to uh, be modeled on the Fuji Eterna film. And on his website he says that uh, this film stock was used to shoot Captain Phillips, Wall Street, Money Never Sleeps, and The Butler. Apparently they were all shot on that film stock. I watched Captain Phillips and that movie looks really, really good. And lot five, we have Bleach. Uh, this one's modeled on the Fujifilm Super, Super F. So why it's called Bleach, uh, it's actually kind of cool. It's kind of that Saving Private Ryan look. It just looks really, really harsh and gritty. Apparently there was a bleaching process that was done to the film stock, which gave it that specific look, and that's what he was trying to recreate here. And he talks in his video about how it was a challenge to way decrease the contrast and at the same time maintain the same amount of dynamic range. So it's totally cool. I recommend going and watching the video that he made there. Link will be in the description. It's super worth your time. It's awesome. I'm getting bitten up here. It was also used in War of the Worlds. So the LUTs work on only a very select few different cameras. Most notably the Airy Alexa and works on both the Blackmagic 6K, I believe 6K Pro because they have the same sensor, and the Blackmagic 4K, and a lot of the newer Sony cameras. So if you guys want a full list, it'll be in the description. I'll list them all down there, all the cameras that are supported under these LUTs. And he has a list of instructions based on the camera that you're using. Of course, I have the A7S III, so it says in the PDF that's given to me whenever you buy the LUTs, it says that you need to use it with S-Log3 with S-Gamut Cine 3. S gamut cine dot three. It, this I don't who names these things. And the reason you need to shoot in S log three, not S log two, is because S log three allows for the full 15 stops of dynamic range, whereas the S log two only allows for 14 stops. I believe that's what it says. So Joel doesn't think you need to overexpose your S log footage. Now this is kind of controversial because a lot of people still think you really need to. Joel disagrees. Like Gerald Undone is adamant that you need to overexpose by 1.7 stops. I'm 1.3 stops overexposed. I should probably fix that. 1.7 stops overexposed. I got you, Gerald. Joel says that you don't need to overexpose by that, just because the new sensors can resolve low light information really, really well. And I agree, it, it totally can. Um, but I still think it's a really, really good practice to overexpose. Uh, just because getting information from the darker part of the image can be a lot harder than retrieving information like, say, back behind me, the clouds and everything. So, and there's a lot more information in the darker part of the images, and you're going to notice noise there a lot more than if you need to crank down the exposure of the background. So another thing I see a lot of people doing whenever they're using LUTs, and this is totally fine because this is needed in a lot of areas, people say never use LUTs at 100%. Now, this depends on the kind of LUTs that you're using. On most LUTs, sure, it's totally okay. You don't want to use it at 100% because it is way too much and you are going to want to crank it down because, again, subtlety is what's key here. However, these LUTs are geared specifically towards these cameras. He has done all his magic in making 
these specific for the camera that you selected, okay? He tailors them towards the specific camera that you selected. He says you need to use these at 100%, or he strongly recommends that you use these at 100%. And if you don't, it looks so bad because most people when you're using S-Log, they use a D-Log LUT and another LUT on top of that, or they just D-LUT themselves. They increase the contrast and add the saturation but with these LUTs you don't need to do that at all again since it's tailored towards S-Log3 it's already doing the delogging for you it's adding back in all that contrast all that saturation so you don't need to do anything to the image so decreasing the amount that the LUTs are affecting the image is just gonna make it grayed out and it's not gonna look good do not use these at anything under 100% I think that's kind of self-explanatory whenever you start using them. Uh, again, I'm getting bitten up out here, so I'm gonna head inside. <laughs> this was so gorgeous, though. Sink. So we're gonna pretend that this is the same day of what you guys just saw me walking inside, because I totally just came inside. I didn't end up going to sleep that day and not finishing the video. I just wanted to summarize the video real quick and just talk about this last point here. So pricing wise, these can seem a little pricey. So we have two different options. We have the area looks and the film looks pack and you can buy them individually for $49 and you can buy both packs for just $79. So you're getting a good discount there if you buy them both at once. And again, the discount code July, you can save 15% and that's still going for the month of July. So. If you're contemplating getting these LUTs, now's a great time to get them. I use these all the time. I don't use them for every shoot, but if I need to get something looking good really, really quick, you can slap these on and it looks amazing. So I highly recommend these LUTs. I'm not going into too much technical detail because I don't really know all that. If you guys do want to go into that detail, there's the videos on Joel's website and I can put those in the links in the descriptions for you guys to watch if you guys do want to see those. All right guys, so I put a lot of work into this video. You guys should totally hit that like button. Uh, that'd be pretty awesome. But yeah, that's it for today. Uh, I'm gonna go get some coffee. Conveniently, I don't have to go upstairs to do that. It's right over here. Yeah, so I'm just gonna sit here and drink my coffee. Did you, did you hit the like button? No? I mean, it's right down there, man. <laughs> Do it.